Cool. Yep. We good? Yep. Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Mike. Um, I work at Lucasfilm doing uh, animation software for a living. Um, but I've uh, become interested in uh, contributing to the OLPC program. So, uh, last year at the San Francisco Summit, uh, I talked to my friend Jennifer Martino, who's here somewhere, and she runs OLPC Canada. And uh, what she was saying was, what she was noticing from her kids up in uh, northern uh, Canada, was that they would record uh, videos with the XO, uh, but then they didn't have a way of cutting those clips together. So uh, she showed me one of the videos, and it's really funny. There's kids sitting at a desk and kind of pretending they're newscasters, and the one kid is like, oh, we're, re we're uh, reporting here from remote northern Ontario, and uh, it's really cold out here today. And he'll say, uh, my, my buddy's out here in the field, and uh, now, a word from, now a word from him. And they'll take the laptop and go, whoop. <laughs> Turn around, you, you see a kid at the same table saying, oh, I'm out here in the field and it's really cold. So it's hilarious and also is, um, it's also um, essentially showing that there's a lot of creativity out there of how you might create video applications with the EXO, but not the software currently to support it. Um, at least uh, natively to sugar anyway. So uh, I started investigating what was possible and looked into something called PTV, which is a um, which is a uh, open source video editor. The problem there though is that it's more like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. It's um, you know there's a lot of English text in the app. There's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of sort of expected knowledge to save something. You have to press the, the disk icon, which of course has no meaning outside of um, you know the the, the sort of uh, North America and maybe a few other countries. Um, so um, my interest was to make take that kind of idea, but to really boil it down and make it as simple as possible. So um, the sort of thought is that um, you would have your um, uh, you would have your videos from your journal on the left, and you click the one you want. It comes up here. Then you can scrub between, um, you can scrub between, uh, you know, kind of seek within the video, and all you need to do is set a start and an end point. So that essentially allows you to trim the video uh, if you have, you know, pre-roll, okay, uh, get it started, or uh, okay, that's good, uh, cut, you know, you have, you have um, uh, stuff at the beginning and the end of a clip generally that you don't want. Um, you can kind of trim on either side of the clip, and then you would add it to your sort of final shot list. Um, ultimately, then you might reorder them and do a few more, and then press save, or actually have an arrow that goes back to the journal, which would then take the clips and compile them together into a final project um, that then could be shared, you know, with the standard, um, the standard uh, journal sharing uh, ability. Um, so this would really allow, um, uh, I would hope, um, would allow kids to take that creativity that they have for filmmaking currently and to create actual video projects and not just um, single clips. So this is where I'm at now. This is really in design phase still. I feel like I'm feeling good about the design and most of my work has currently been on the actual, um, what I figure is the hardest part is actually using the GStreamer API to cut together the clips and make sure the audio doesn't get lost. So I'm using clips of myself that I've recorded on the XO175 as input. And uh, I'm getting close uh, uh, to being able to take those input files and then splice them together, just cuts, and trim the two sides. Um, and so from there, uh, then I can build the UI and ultimately then uh, integrate it with Sugar. Cool. Uh, it's great, thanks. And we've, we've got uh, some interest from OLPC Canada and Peru and a couple others already. Um, so I think it will get used if I can finally uh, uh, get time to finish it. But I think uh, I'm get, getting close and feeling feeling good about where we're at. Um, yeah, I think... I, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying, do you have anything running on the XO yet? No, no, I didn't bring it in uh, today. But, um, but uh, essentially it's now like a standalone program that will read in a couple of video clips um, and will um, and will write them out as a, as a single one that's sliced together. Okay, yeah. and then can you take a clip and split it into two clips? Um, sure, yeah, so if you say wanted to the kind of um, benefit of having this sort of trim only and add to library thing is that if you wanted the same clip to be reused in another section you can add that to your list and then say you you have this one already in there from one second to five seconds, but this is maybe a 30 second long clip. You could put it in here and then later on in your project, uh, add this one again and find a different start and different end point and add say 20 seconds to 27 seconds. You could then add that in as just another option. So you can sort of with this simple start and end point only, um, you can split clips, you can trim clips, 
and you can cut them, but you um, you don't need to have the overhead of um, sort of a, uh, a non-linear track with, with your audio track and stuff, um, kind of allowing you the power, but without any of the of the kind of technological right. overhead. Yeah. So yeah. what do you think would be ready? Sure. So um, that's been one of the most popular questions today. I think um, I'm aiming for early next year, hopefully. Um, I think as soon as I solve this GStreamer API thing that I'm running into, um, from there I feel like uh, from then I've got really the, the hardest part of the technology will be, will be solved. And then it's just a matter of kind of building it into the UI and ultimately then integrating it to the journal. So I'm hoping next year, early next year sometime. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot.